Let's talk about gastritis, inflammation of your stomach. Now, the symptoms of gastritis, which would be indigestion, vomiting, especially a fluid that's yellow and green, which is actually bile. I'm going to come back to that. Another symptom would be nausea, low appetite, abdominal pain, especially in the upper part, burning, especially at night and between meals. Now, normally when you have acidity, uh, acid reflux, or heartburn, I would recommend taking either betaine hydrochloride, which is an acidifier, or apple cider vinegar, but not if you have gastritis. This is different, and with gastritis, we have inflammation of the stomach. So if you're gonna add more acid, you're gonna make it worse. So one simple way to determine if you have gastritis is just to take some acid, apple cider vinegar, betaine hydrochloride, and see if you get worse. And if you get worse, you either have gastritis or an ulcer. If you get better, then we know that it was a lack of acid that was causing this in the first place. And usually the pH of the stomach or the concentration of acid will control the closing of the valve on the top of the stomach. So if you don't have enough acid or the pH is too alkaline, the top of the valve doesn't close that well. And so the acid can kind of regurgitate as an acid reflux or GERD. But there's this other condition of gastritis that I want to talk about, which is different. Now, normally when you go to the doctor, the way they treat gastritis is with an antacid, which treats the symptom. But what about the underlying actual cause? Is that ever addressed? I don't know. So here are several things that cause gastritis. Uh, alcohol, aspirin, NSAIDs, H. pylori can be associated with gastritis. But also there's two other things that I want to focus on. One is cortisol, okay, and the other is bile. Let's first talk about cortisol. Cortisol is activated by stress. So cortisol increases gastric acids, even when there's no food in your stomach. This cortisol can then cause gastric erosion because it can decrease the mucosal layer, the mucus lining that protects the stomach. So if you start wearing down that layer, you're going to get inflammation. And if it's eventually wore out, you can get an ulcer, and this is why stress can cause ulcers. There are two ulcers I want to talk about. One is called curling ulcers by a certain doctor's name because he discovered it, but that's really another name for a stress ulcer. And I think there's two mechanisms going on. There's one where cortisol actually destroys the lining of the stomach, and number two, cortisol depletes zinc, which then also causes a lack of healing which then also can cause an ulcer. I've done a video on that. I'll put that link down below. Then you have Cushing ulcer. And I'm almost positive that that relates to Cushing syndrome, which is an excess amount of cortisol. And in this type of ulcer, you have an overstimulation of the vagus nerve, which then increases gastric acid, which can then cause an ulcer. But what you should know is cortisol in general, coming from some stress, emotional stress or whatever, can create this gastritis and eventually an ulcer. Cortisol in general is supposed to be an anti-inflammatory. So how could increasing more cortisol cause more inflammation? Well, I think it's a similar mechanism to insulin. When you increase insulin, it becomes dysfunctional. You get insulin resistance and then it doesn't work anymore. Probably the same thing that's going on with uh, cortisol. High levels of cortisol makes cortisol less effective. So now, instead of acting as an anti-inflammatory, you get more inflammation. And this is why if you study um, a very high level of cortisol, as in Cushing syndrome, we have all sorts of inflammatory conditions listed, as well as a condition with low cortisol, Addison's, you see the same thing. You have a lot of inflammation going in the body. Now, cortisol also affects the immune system. An increase of cortisol creates a suppression of white blood cells. So if you don't have white blood cells working, you're going to get a lack of immune protection and you're going to get a lack of repair, probably because you don't have the inflammation there to help in the healing process. Now let's come back to another cause that I mentioned, bile. If there's bile regurgitating up into the stomach, as in bile reflux gastritis, you're going to get burning in the stomach. Um, Bile is a detergent, and it can irritate the stomach lining. It can irritate the liver. 
So if there's any type of backup in bile, you're going to have inflammation. And so this usually comes from an obstruction in the bile ducts. And the simple remedy is to use a bile salt. The one I'm going to recommend is Tutka. You take some Tutka, maybe two in the morning on an empty stomach, two in the afternoon on an empty stomach, and that will start increasing the flow of bile and lessening the reflux of bile into the stomach. It's very difficult to differentiate between GERD and this bile reflux where you have bile coming up through the esophagus because if you expose the esophagus to bile or acid, it creates a similar effect. But if you take Tudka and you feel better, then we know it was an obstruction in the bile. The bile is too thick, it's creating a, a sluggishness, and it's kind of clogging everything up, and Tudka thins the bile. All right, so what should we do if we have gastritis? Number one, you need to decrease stress as much as possible, okay? That's easier said than done, but I'm gonna put a link down below of some things you can do. You wanna increase more sleep that's going to greatly reduce cortisol. Taking vitamin D can help because vitamin D will help lower cortisol. Zinc carnosine will also help gastritis. Do things to support the adrenal, like adaptogens, lemon balm, tea, things like that. Keto. Keto helps take people out of the flight or fight mode. Also, fasting will help repair inflammation probably more than anything else that I know, and, and so will vitamin D. They're both very powerful anti-inflammatories. And then you may also want to use mastic gum instead of some alkalizers because it's more natural and that can help decrease the acid as you're fixing the underlying cause. But of course, with all of this advice, check with your doctor before doing any of this. Thanks for watching.